If you're going to make a living daydreaming, New York is the place for inspiration. And amidst it all, on top of the Manhattan headquarters of his rapidly expanding advertising empire... Statue of Liberty's over there, Freedom Tower's behind us. ..is David Droger. You take a moment to sort of laugh, you know, how am I here? Yeah. Type of thing. You know, Dingo of Wall Street. The Dingo of Wall Street. <laughs> Better than the Wolf of Wall Street, exactly, that's correct. Exactly. This self-described dingo is, in the world of advertising, a superstar. Hailed as a creative genius. To most of us, he's anonymous. But David Droger is one of the most powerful people on the planet right now, who always stays just to the edge of frame. If Barack Obama doesn't become the next president of the United States, I'm going to blame the Jews. I am. He is the creative force behind no less than Beyonce and Pharrell Williams. He helped President Obama win a second term. Yes, we can. And his campaign for the UN has been its most successful ever. And if that's not enough, he's just been signed up by Google, the biggest company on the planet. He has the ear of presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton, husband Bill, and that other world-beating Bill is also on the Droger books, Bill Gates. You know what, people's attention has to be earned. You know, we can't just assume that we can bombard them into submission anymore, which is what it used to be. How do you describe most advertisements today? Most of them are pretty bad. Sadly, the way people are portrayed in advertising, I mean, majority of it, like, I don't know anyone who lives like that or looks like that or talks like that or sounds like that. I mean, every guy's a moron. Every woman is this sort of one-dimensional thing. Every kid is perfect and sort of, you know... I mean, it's just like anyone lives in these wholesome houses that are... It's crazy. The Droger empire is built on a hoax, a very elaborate hoax. His fledgling Droger 5 agency was launched with the most audacious of campaigns tricking the world into believing Air Force One, the president's plane, had been vandalised with graffiti. Break into Andrews Air Force Base and deface the president's plane, Air Force One. No, you didn't hear that incorrectly. It made headline news. The shot tonight is really making the rounds on the internet. This video has been walking the internet. And behind all the hype, David Droger, repainting an entire jumbo jet and shooting it on nothing more than an iPhone. It's an ad, but not as we know it. A viral video to promote an American fashion brand. But that hoax launched your success. It, it launched this agency's success, because suddenly we went from being, you know, no one had heard of the agency to who, who's this agency that just did that? I mean, why buy media when you can use the media's channels to become your media outlet? It gives them content worthy and a story. And then when the story comes out that it was not real, people will appreciate the fact that you, we sort of, you know, punked the man. Pranking the president was just the beginning. And he's just kept breaking all the rules. They wanted to make a commercial about how they couldn't afford to make a commercial. I like it. Which inevitably meant taking on the holy grail of advertising, the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl has become a parody of itself in a sense. There's so much money is spent there and there's so much hype and padding around it. And the commercials are so over the top that they're sort of almost ridiculous. So, never one to take anything too seriously, David Droger took on the might and muscle of the traditional Super Bowl ad and turned it upside down. Um, I was really excited to make a commercial with Newcastle, but then it turns out they don't even have the money or permission to make a commercial. They can't even say the word It's bleeped. How the are you gonna make a commercial without saying the words? That we just sort of took the mickey out of all the ads and also allowed us to get away with some very funny stuff. I'll just give you an endorsement right now. Hi. Um, Newcastle Brown Ale, the only beer that ever promised me a high paying role in a commercial and then backed out at the last second like a bunch of 
Olympics. It's the first time an ad that actually didn't run the Super Bowl was named favourite. It's kind of a lovely, delicious irony to that. Suck it. That ad was for Newcastle Brown Ale. Stand by. Today, this very happy client wants another dose of the Droga magic. Cheerio, America. It seems that many of you feel that Newcastle Brown Ale went too far. This time, he's rented a New York mansion, has summoned Liz Hurley, and we get to see why they call this man the guru. Though he says his whole career is built on daydreaming. Do you love seeing it get to this stage, from coming up with the idea to actually hear and shooting it? I still, to this day, as much as when I first started in the industry to now, always get surprised and shocked and excited. And this is your daydream coming to life? It is. Action. I'm not touching the product. It's in my contract. How important is daydreaming and where can it take you? I think daydreaming is an amazing thing because I feel like you... You explore places where textbooks don't go, and, and who doesn't need a bit, of da bit more daydream? We all do it. We just shouldn't feel guilty about it, right? David Droger has successfully blurred the line between entertainment and advertising. If you knew that visiting your grandparents could change the world, would you do it? Of course you would. You'd have to be a douche nozzle not to. So successfully, that Hollywood's biggest talent agency has just paid a quarter of a billion dollars for a stake in Droga 5. And the business has accounts worth billions. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr David Droga. He's making a fortune and winning more awards than anyone. Thank you very much. By not doing what everyone else does. You are extremely influential. You're the man behind the scenes. You're the man behind the scenes making us buy things. Well, again, that sounds like I'm sort of the, the, you know, the puppet master of such, but we're communicators and, you know, we try and do a bloody good job of it. I mean, I feel like I'm in a cushy office in Wall Street, you know, with clients who, who pay well to, to, for me to daydream. That's not lost on me that how fortunate that is, right? So, you know, that keeps you a little bit grounded. You can't get too, too up your own. Whatever. <laughs> His own childhood was far from a commercial cliché. David grew up in Australia's highest house in Jindabyne, the fifth of six children, just as the Snowy River Hydro scheme was being completed. The only available TV channel wasn't worth watching, and their Danish mother, an artist, was intent on her children living a creative life. You were not exposed to a lot of advertising as a kid, were you? I didn't grow up in a household where I really watched television. I mean, you know, there was, I'm trying to remember that, CTC7 or whatever, it was the only television station in, in, that we could get in Perisher. I can't remember watching television during the day once, ever, actually. Play acting and the outdoors replaced TV and ads, and David's imagination ran wild. And you're outdoors all the time, sort of making your own adventure and using your imagination and playing. And, and we're lucky, we came ready-made with six kids, you know, so it was kind of, we're our own little village walking around and operating, creating yeah. terror. We're like a Viking raiding party everywhere we went, <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, when David visits his old Aussie home each year... I love it. Like, it makes me very homesick and also realise how uh, I, I've got to get back here more often, actually. It's up to his younger sister, Annika, and his other siblings to keep this high flyer's feet firmly on the ground. Makes but we sense. keep him very grounded when he comes back here. That's, that's your job sure. as a sister, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Yeah. His high life in Manhattan doesn't exist when he gets back here. It's like, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, what's up David. with that? Come on. Oh, yeah, that big ad you did with Obama. Yeah, what? Oh, yeah, can someone pass the salad? Yeah, it's a little bit of that happening. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Do you remember when we were sitting here in summer having our family photos? Like, we'd always be sitting down on these steps because we were the youngest and we'd have all the boys behind. Little did a young David Droger know that his childhood imagination, carefree optimism and a streak of Australian larrikin would parlay him into becoming a pioneer in the new digital world of commercial advertising. 
So the scruffy rat bag who looked out the window down in the snowy mountains daydreaming now gets to look out of the corner here over Manhattan and daydream big. It's pretty amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to build the most influential agency in the world. Trying and succeeding. Droga 5, his global advertising agency, has a little bit of Aussie family history right there in its name as the kid from Jindabyne takes on the world. You know, because I was the fifth son in the family, my mother sewed laundry tags on all my clothes that simply said Droga 5, just, just so my brothers wouldn't pick up my undies or my socks. <laughs> so from a label stitched in your undies, yeah, exactly. it's now the, the, the name on one of the biggest ad agency brands in the world. I do laugh sometimes. Well, there are some clients that think it's the five principles of engagement and communication. But, you know, <laughs> it's a label it's in your like, undies. It's, it's, a, it's a socks and undies label, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But can't be a true story, right? Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.